Oh, hey, you guys. I hate to be the bearer of some mediocre news here, but tax season is upon us. It's here. And before you submit all your pay stubs and paperwork, you need to be confident that you checked all the right boxes and maybe even some that you're not aware of yet. So today I'm sharing how to actually get out of paying taxes legally. But before we talk about how to avoid paying money that you don't owe, let's cover some of the basics. So here are four things that everyone should prioritize as tax season approaches. And spoiler alert, number four is a hot take that you definitely want to stick around for. So number one is don't cut corners. So obviously there's some hacks and write-offs and things you can do, you know, to submit yourself to saying, yeah, I don't have to pay you know, all this money that I don't know, I can write it off, which is great. And we'll talk more about that later. But in general, taxes are not something that you wanna be careless about. So when your employer sends a giant folder in the mail that says tax documents enclosed, you wanna keep those secure and around to make sure that, yeah, you have a good handle on them. Or when you make a tax deductible donation from your church or maybe a local charity, keep that receipt and file it away. Because every, you know, every little bit, it adds up, you guys. And you'll be glad that you saved those breadcrumbs along the way. So when April comes around, you can write them off. Number two, speaking of April, be on time. Yes, you never wanna be the person who procrastinates your taxes, which is so easy to do. And if you don't wanna be completely out of options on tax day, make sure to be early. And this is one of those like adult things that you have to do and you'll realize, oh my gosh, every year, this is part of my routine. So you kind of have to like suck it up, be on time, do the adult thing. And personally, Winston and I, we like to have ours filed in late February, early March, again, just to keep everything going, so. Now this brings me to number three, which is work with a pro. So especially if you've had a big life change within the last year, like you're buying or moving houses, changing jobs, getting married or divorced, having a kid, or maybe you got like a big raise. Again, when you have somebody in your corner that's a pro that does this day in and day out, it is so helpful. So I'm gonna leave a link below so you can get connected with a trusted pro. And even if you haven't had anything major happen in the last year, sometimes again, it's nice to have somebody to guide you through the process and make sure you aren't overpaying. And Smart Tax is another great resource if you're looking just to do it yourself. And this is great software that you can trust. All right, my final tip before we reveal how you can legally avoid paying taxes is to always shoot for net zero. So a lot of people feel like, oh my gosh, I wanna get this massive refund. It's free money. It feels so good to get a check in the mail from the IRS later on in the year. But honestly, I'm on the other side of the coin. Ideally, you would owe nothing and you wouldn't get anything in a refund. Like you would find a net zero there. But personally, I would almost rather owe a little bit than get to a point that I'm getting a big check in the mail because that money, instead of you using it throughout the year to invest it or to give it or to do something with it, it's been sitting over in Washington, D.C., not making any interest, doing nothing. So. If you, again, have received a large tax refund, it is not free money, that is your money that you were supposed to have in your paycheck. So you may wanna contact your HR department. Again, kind of look at your overall, what taxes are being taken out of your paycheck. And again, sit down with a pro if you want some help. Okay, since we've covered those basics, let's get to the good stuff. And here are some of the tax exemption opportunities that you wanna be aware of. So if you're a small business owner or even part-time side hustle worker, keep your receipts expenses like office space utilities, company-sponsored work lunches, liability insurance, gas for business trips, supplies for your craft, what you're doing, all of these could be submitted for reimbursement. And every government has its flaw, but one thing I appreciate about ours is that they value small businesses in this way. So the tax exemption opportunities for entrepreneurs are a great example of this. So take advantage of it. Another great tool is the 10 at 31 exchange. So if you have invested in real estate beyond your personal home, there's a process for how you do this without getting crushed by capital gains taxes. And a lot of people use the verbiage like, let's just 1031 it, right? If it's like, I'm gonna sell this and get this. So basically what it does is it allows you to sell one property that again is in your possession for your business or for an investment purpose, sell that one and then go buy a new one, again, that you're using for the same purpose. It has to be a like kind property. And the proceeds from the sale must be held in escrow by a third party and then used towards the new property. But as long as you're channeling the profits into your next investment, you're in the clear and you don't have to pay capital gains on it. So it's awesome. Now there are some timeframes 
times that you want to make sure that you have to identify the, the second property. You have to close within a certain amount of time. So make sure you do it all right. But it is a way that you don't pay taxes on that property. And finally, there are literally dozens of random exemptions that you can apply for. So if you don't take the standard deduction, then you can move in and say, hey, are there things that I can actually deduct? And you actually conduct more than the standard deduction. So you could look at self-funded classroom supplies if you're a teacher, moving expenses, medical expenses, student loan interest, dependent care costs, disability tax credit, home office expenses. I mean, there are so many things out there, you guys, that you can deduct. And like I recommended earlier, reach out to a pro, make sure to confirm all your exemptions that you're eligible for. And it never hurts to ask. And when you find out about new ways to save on taxes, start implementing those throughout the year. And if you're looking for more pro tips, then click the link below and watch another video with even more info when it comes to tax basics. And visit RamseySolutions.com to get connected with a Ramsey Trusted Pro. And as always, you guys, remember to take control of your money and create a life you love.